Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson, and I am telling you what, this trifecta of evil, I'm talking about James, Angeron, and Hochul, have ended. They have effectively ended the state of New York. This is wild. And I'm going to show you billionaires who are leaving this state, but more importantly, I'm going to show you some new evidence that shows you just how bad this decision is and how surely this will be overturned on appeal. This award, um, I mean, just leaving the whole Trump thing out of it, and, and seeing what occurred here, and, and I'm, I'm no different than any other investor. I'm shocked at this. I, I can't even understand or fathom uh, the the decision at all. It, it, there's no rationale for it. And so, let me give you a real time uh, experience I'm having regarding this. And I'm not the only one. It doesn't matter what the governor says. New York was already a loser state. So what Kevin O'Leary is referring to here is that Kathy Hochul made headlines by saying that New York businesses are different than Donald Trump. And they have nothing to worry about after the $354 million ruling in the civil case. But here's the problem. Business owners don't think that way. They don't believe her. Because all they have to do is get on the wrong side of New York's politics now, and apparently the same thing could happen to them. And remember when they told us that this case was uh, tried before a judge because the Trump attorneys had made a mistake in their filing? Well, that all turned out to be crap. I remember this. So here we have from Engeron's decision, thus there was no right to a jury. And the case was tried to the court, the court being the sole fact finder and the judge of credibility. But you have to remember, this was after Daily Beast ran the irony of Trump whining about a jury trial his lawyers didn't formally request or Salon saying experts mock Trump whining it's unfair he doesn't get jury after a lawyer messed up the paperwork. The lawyer never messed up the paperwork. Like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now. And I'm not the only person saying that. And here's a real time situation. In development in real estate right now, the hottest asset class is very high end data centers. They cost anywhere from two and a half to three and a half billion each. They are very expensive. They require low power. You need permits. But most of the major institutions in the world need more data centers. And that's why developers like me are doing this. Now, you need power. So New York has Niagara Falls. Normally, you'd consider that to put in one of these facilities, create 400 jobs, five more jobs for each of one of those for auxiliary services. I can't go to New York. So not only is Kevin O'Leary not interested in New York, apparently truckers aren't interested in delivering to New York, which would make it even harder for businesses to do business in New York. Now, I'm sure not everybody can do the boycott. But the bottom line is, if you wipe out even... 5%, 10%, that is cataclysmic, people. And so New York is facing the law of unintended consequences. These idiots never think this stuff through. Good morning, Patriots. This is Trucker Jay. Let's talk about the New York City trucker boycott. Of course, overnight, liberals all have become experts on the trucking industry. They all know logistics forward and backwards. Well, we're all going to lose our jobs. We're all going to be replaced by AI. Here's the thing. We have a deficit in this country of 85,000 truck drivers. You want to do AI? Bring it. We could use the help. But it's not going to happen in my lifetime. It's not going to happen in your lifetime. It's not going to happen in your grandkids' lifetime. And then you're going to say, oh, the, the, the illegals, they're going to take your jobs. Really? The illegals? They can't pass a background check, can't pass a drug screening, and then you got the language barrier? What insurance company is going to hire someone who cannot pass a background check? So anyway... Truckers, you're safe. Those of you truckers who have to work, totally get it. You do you. No one's going to eat your lunch if you're not going to, you know, be part of the boycott. But those of you who are part of the boycott, boycott, God bless you. This is Trucker Jake. God bless President Trump. God bless MAGA America. God bless you truckers out there, and y'all have a great day. So I'm going to Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia. Governor Stitt, Kevin Stitt, my staff have met with him. Governor Bergen, the same thing. Governor Justice, those are winner states. They don't do things like this. I have to syndicate that debt and all that equity. We're talking billions of dollars here. Do you think any foreign institution or any private equity firm or any pension fund would touch New York? 
No. And that's why New Yorkers should be concerned. The fine people of New York should ask themselves, why are we such a loser state? How are we going to attract business? It's not just the existing businesses that are fleeing out to Texas and Florida. What about new money like this that I'm talking about, like a $4 billion data center? Not a chance I would put that in New York. Zero probability. Never. And so they've got a lot of work to do to find themselves getting out of this situation. This has all occurred post-pandemic. Winner states versus loser states. Look at Tennessee right now, fastest growing city in America, Nashville. Winner state, good policy, competitive taxes. You've got to start thinking about this in the context of winners and losers. New York, mega loser state. I just love this. Winners and losers. He's talking completely like Donald Trump. Losers going to lose. Winners going to win. Mega losers. I said mega or MAGA. Losers right here. If you want to make America great again, make sure New York loses. Get the heck out of New York. Move to a state that actually likes you. So, Kevin, what did you think of Governor Hochul saying this is like a unique one and done because Donald Trump went too far and was so nefarious. Uh, you guys, if you're just doing what you should be doing, you have nothing to worry about. But they're very worried about it. Yeah, we're very worried. Every investor is worried because where is the victim? Who lost money? This is some arbitrary decision a judge made. This policy and what this says, what does this say about the bar, the legal bar? in New York. Aren't they going to question this judge? What is this? $355 million and there's dollars as a, as a penalty and there's plus interest at 9% and there's no victim? I mean, I'm sorry, her, her words fall on deaf ears to everybody. There's nothing she can say to justify this decision. And this has nothing to do with Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. Forget about Trump. This is not a Trump situation. This is a New York problem now. The whole world is looking at this saying, what are you doing to yourselves? Yes, Mr. Wonderful can sure call that because here we have a victimless crime. The banks were paid. And yet there's victim crimes of victimhood on the streets of New York. Even cops are being victimized. And yet Alvin Bray can't even prosecute those people because video is not enough evidence. This is how wild. Everybody can see this now. Nobody wants to go to New York. Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out, We've reached the point where your political beliefs, combined with what venue your case is heard in, are the primary determinants of the outcome, not the facts related to the case. It's truly sad what's happened to our country, and I hope others see it before it's too late to correct course. And Peter Schiff, another billionaire, tweeted out, Let me get this straight. Sophisticated big banks decided to loan Trump money, and they were repaid in full with interest. They never complained. And now Trump was fined $365 million because some judge claims Trump obtained those loans based on fraud. The real fraud is New York's kangaroo court. And I'm wondering, where does this money even go to? It's what, is it getting paid back to the banks? Because no one was defrauded. It's obscene. Peter Schiff even responded with another great point. How many people who ob obtained liar's loans during the housing bubble were ever fined for inflating their incomes or underestimating their liabilities. So if you don't remember back during the housing bubble, they had what were called nanny, no asset, no income verification, or ninja, no asset, no job, uh, or income. I mean, there were all these loans. They call them liar loans because people constantly lied about their income and their assets and you know the value of the property, all of it. And yet all those people were supposedly victims of the banks. And yet now the banks are the victims of the guy who paid their loan back. This is the most obscene nonsense I've ever seen. But now for the real bombshell. Bernard Carrick just tweeted this out. This is just one element of proof that New York State AG Letitia James and Engeron are far more corrupt than anyone imagined. So this just listed the most expensive home in America for $295 million. It is a record in the U.S. It's a 24,000 square foot property in Florida. Mar-a-Lago is 62,000 square feet, almost three times the size. And don't forget, I showed that video before, but it's with all the handmade tiles, everything that went into Mar-a-Lago. The U.S. government gave it up. It was supposed to be a retreat for presidents. They couldn't even afford to keep it up. Judge Moron and Letitia James said it's only worth $18 million. Clearly, this judge and AG need to be investigated for this sham trial. How do they keep getting away with this? Listen, Janine, honestly, my thoughts are the best thing I ever did was get out of New York. New York is a, is a hopeless place at this point. It's so sad. This judge ruled against my father before we even went to trial. He ruled against our entire family. 
it was a setup from the very beginning. This was never supposed to be in that court. It was supposed to be in the commercial division. They would never allow it to get there. This judge, the animosity, the way he looked at my father in the courthouse was was horrible. I've never seen such hatred in anybody's eyes before. Um, Janine, we're an amazing company. And I can truly say that I have never, we have never missed a loan payment. We've never defaulted. We've never breached a covenant. Deutsche Bank, they're the most you know respected and sophisticated bank in the world. They came in and effectively testified that they had an amazing relationship with us. We paid off every loan ahead of time. They made hundreds of millions of dollars off of our organization. We put hundreds of millions of dollars of, of extra collateral into the respective assets, made them top tier. You know, we are called by every single you know lender a platinum borrower. Every single one has called us a platinum borrower. Again, never a default. And you have an attorney general who ran on the notion of getting mm -hmm. my father. I'm going to go into the attorney general's office every single day, sue Donald Trump, and go home. I'm going to take him down. You watch. I'm going to sue the blank out of him. That was her political platform. She campaigned on that. She fundraised on that. We didn't have a chance, Janine. We I just know. didn't have a chance in New York because it's a rigged system. And you you could not have a better real estate company than, than ours. You could not have a more professional real estate company than ours. When COVID hit and they shut down every single hospitality company in the country, guess who never missed a loan payment? Guess who paid all of their employees? Who Guess who always did the right thing? Guess who employs thousands of New Yorkers every single day, puts food on the table for their families, educates their, their children? You know, I, I mean, you have a lost state right now where you have businesses fleeing fleeing, fleeing, and you have a company like ours that have paid over $300 million in taxes to a city. My father built the skyline of New York City, and this is the thanks he gets for doing absolutely nothing wrong, not a dollar financial loss. The exact opposite, hundreds of millions of dollars in financial gain. And as to Don and I, we every single witness testified we have nothing to do with this. They went in witness after witness. This is not what they did in the company. It didn't matter to this guy. You know, we were trophies on a wall for this guy. You know, this is the state of New York. I caution anybody. I caution anybody even thinking about moving to New York to just be careful. This is not the state that my father grew up in. This is not the state that we grew up in. It, it, this is the demise of a politically weaponized system. And it's it's horribly sad, Janine. And, and I promise you we're going to fight this and... We're going to win at the appellate division because, honestly, it's so egregious. It's so egregious, I promise you, we're going to get it overturned. I hope they get it overturned at the appellate. But the New York appellate division isn't so hot either, which means it would have to go one step further. I think it does get overturned eventually, but I don't know if the New York appellate division does it. This is an absolute sham. And I want you to think for a second, if you were a business owner, I want you to just kind of just mentally go there. If you're a business owner like the Trumps or any business owner and you have a weaponized government that produces nothing, the government does not produce anything and they come against you like this as the producer, the one who is providing the jobs, who is one who is paying the taxes, the one who is actually paying these idiot salaries in the government. And then they come at you like this. And how would that make you feel? And how should that make you feel as an American? Not a Trump supporter, not a Biden supporter, not an anything. But as an American, how should that make you feel? Thanks so much for listening. We'll catch you on the next episode of Lumberjack Logic. Remember to support my sponsor, MyPillow, MyPillow.com. Promo code Lumberjack for big savings. And subscribe if you're new. Peace out.